Welcome, Isaiah Saldivar. Come on. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our shout. There is nobody like our God. Come on, worthy is the Lord. Don't stop when the preaching starts. Don't stop praising just because I get up here. He is worthy of all of our praise. He is worthy of everything this morning. Take your seat, take your seat. I want to give you liberty to shout how you want to shout. I want to give you liberty to praise how you want to praise. You say, Isaiah, why'd you tell us to stand and then sit back down? Because, friend, today is not the Isaiah Saldivar show. Today we are not here to exalt a man. We are not here because, oh, if Isaiah prays, praise for me, then God will do this or God will do that. There is one thing and one person that we came to pursue and his name is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus. He's the one that is worthy of our praise. Come on, real loud. He's the one that is worthy of our shout. He is the one that is worthy of being excited about. So I'm not giving God a half-hearted praise. Come on, can y'all hear me out there? I'm not giving God a half-hearted worship. I'm going to praise because I've been delivered. I'm going to praise because I've been healed. I'm going to praise because he's worthy. If God hasn't done anything for me, I'm still going to praise him. If God hasn't done anything for me, I'm still going to worship. He's worthy of all of me, all of my passion. Oh, come on, break out of laziness today. Break Break out of comfort today. Break out of status quo. Somebody needs to dust the, themselves off from that dusty, crusty religion and say, I'm breaking out today. I'm going to shout like I've never shouted. I'm giving the devil a fever today. I'm giving the demons a migraine today. God has done too much for me to be silent. That's all that God's done. It's all that God's done. It's all that he's, I want to challenge some of you that have gone through the motions. God is calling us. If you didn't hear every song, it's about awakening. It's about revival. It's about the presence and the power and the anointing of God showing up in your life and changing everything. Today, the veil is being removed off of us. Today, God says, I am doing a new thing in your life. I am waking you up. I'm breaking you out of that comfort of nominal Christianity. How many of you want to vomit thinking about the lukewarmness of the culture? How many of you want to vomit thinking about the complacency of the church? But bear it real loud if you can. There is a trumpet that God is sounding in these last days. There is an alarm going off that those that have ears. Oh, brother, that's just annoying. Your preaching annoys me. It's not you that's upset this morning. It's a demonic power that wants to shut down the move of God. Friend, the devil is alive and well in this generation, and he's working over time. The devil is not working part-time. Do I think the devil has this, and we should give him credit for this? No, I think a lot of stuff that we do, we give the devil credit for when it's really our complacency and our laziness, but we are ignorant if we discredit or disregard that there are real spiritual forces at work that want to silence your mouth, that want to muzzle you from speaking out for the things of God. I'm not talking about just on Sunday. I'm talking about a praise on Monday, a worship on Tuesday, evangelism on Wednesday, deliverance on Thursday, miracles on Friday, holiness on Saturday, fasting on Sunday. I'm talking about being consumed by the presence and the power of God. I'm talking about God becoming not just a part of my life, but every fiber of my being is crying out to Yahweh that every single part of me, this is the crucified life. The devil, the devil does not care that we come Sunday to Sunday and warm a chair. 
The devil does not care that we come Sunday to Sunday hearing incredible preaching that we get. And we are hearers of the word and hearers of the word and another message. And I, I told pastor this yesterday at lunch. I said, man, our generation has a revelation addiction. We have an addiction to a new message and to a new wind of doctrine and a new word. But I'm saying today that the cross is enough, that the power of Jesus is enough, that he is worthy if he never does enough another thing. Come on, help me in this place. He is worthy of all of my time, worthy of all of my affection. We have this goldfish TikTok generation that needs something fresh every 10 seconds. Give me something new. Tell me something I don't know. Give me something every week. Come, come. And then we ask the question, what did you do? Let's just, let's just be practical this morning. What did you do with the message that you learned about three weeks ago? A month and a half ago, six weeks ago, when you were sitting in this church or you were at your church, if you're not from here, praise God, thanks for being here. And maybe next week it'll be a little bit nicer if you're new and you're like, this is my first time, I don't even know who you are. Are you here every week? No, okay. We'll be, just come back next week and you'll get your feelings hurt this morning and then we'll heal you up next week. But you might think about, what did I hear six weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago, three months ago? We have content overload in the church where we get message after message and it's amazing, we need it. The problem is if we're getting it but not doing anything with with it we become overweight christians that are lazy in the things of god see paul said that we have to exercise our faith our faith must be exercised like a muscle we don't just sit around in our faith we don't just live our life sunday to sunday as pastor said punching a little card saying well i did what i had to do but we exercise our faith not on sunday only but the 99 percent of the time outside the church God is saying when are we going to have spiritual ears that when we hear the word of God we respond to the word of God we say man I really want to change today I really want to break out of this comfort zone I really want to drive out demons I really want to lay hands on the sick am I the only one excited this morning can y'all hear me nice and clear real loud real loud I'm I'm you know what it's okay to say? It's okay to say that you're bored in religion. It's okay to say, Isaiah, the Christianity I'm living is boring, not the church. The church is not your issue. You are only here statistically for 1%, so get the pacifier out of your mouth that, oh, the pastor didn't do this or do that. I'm talking about the 99% of your week where you're bored as a Christian because you're not doing. Now, Jesus said this, that you're going to do, and I know all the people watching that are reformed and cessationists and don't believe in the gifts or miracles or deliverance or anything the Bible teaches, they're manifesting right now watching, they're squirming around because they don't believe this verse. I actually, I'm, I'm really weird. I believe the words of Jesus. Like, I read the words, and I'm like, man, I actually believe that's real. Now, it might not be the case that you're living it or doing it, but I believe it's a real reality. When Jesus said, the works that I've done, he goes, I'm going to the Father. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. You're going to do the same works and even greater. And now we get hung up on that in theology and say, oh, of course, no one's going to do greater works than Jesus, and no one could ever do. But the problem is Jesus is the one that said it, not me. It would be blasphemy if I got up and said, it and he didn't say it but Jesus said the calling on your life is that you would do not only what I've done but greater now let's just for the sake of you know making the religious people happy and I know some of you are already mad so let me just gain some ground with you let's pretend Jesus didn't mean greater even though he did okay let's make it clear he did mean it but just for you let's just pretend he didn't mean greater he goes you're going to do the same works in fact not just the same works you're going to do identical works that I have done Jesus came and modeled the Christian life in its fullness. He said, I'm going to come 100% God and 100% man. I'm going to model the Christian life. I'm going to do the works of my father. I'm not going to do anything without my father first showing me, telling me, or doing it. And I'm going to come. And John said, he's going to destroy the works of the devil. One of Jesus's main goals was destruction. Oh, I love this preaching this morning. Was destruction to Satan's kingdom. His message was not, let's gather up once a week for an hour. I love it. Now, I could say that because we're at Without Walls Church. 
So we're not at a church where it's about the four walls. We're not at a church where it's about getting your little blessing and getting your, your butt warmed up on the chair. We're not at a place where you just suck up the air conditioning but never produce anything. We are not here to waste space. We are at a place that is declaring by its name that we are without walls, that the church is extending its reach. Come on, I wish I had somebody more excited than me about what God is doing in this church. But God says, I'm extending my reach outside the four walls because the Bible does declare that he doesn't dwell in buildings made by hands any longer. Now, we come together and we have powerful moments like in worship where I'm shaking y'all in worship. I really am. I'm shaking in the presence of God. I'm refreshed. I'm renewed. I'm empowered. And you think, you know, as leaders and pastors, we think, hey, man, why isn't this happening all the time? Is this Isaiah? Is it Isaiah that's bringing the presence of God with him? And it's only when Isaiah is here we have the presence of God. Let me tell you why. That's completely false. Here's why the presence of God shows up. It's not because we're in a beautiful building and the house is packed. It's because the people of God are are coming together from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different economic statuses, and we are all coming with one desire. Come on, help me. With one desire, and that's to exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We didn't come for some preacher. We came for Yahweh. We came to encounter the presence and the power of God. We came to repent of our carnal ways. And so God says, I inhabit the praises of my people. God does not inhabit spectators. God does not inhabit lukewarm churches. God says, I dwell where I could find a people that are willing to worship me and praise me in spirit and in truth. I am looking for a people that would not be worried about the boyfriend sitting next to them, the girlfriend sitting next to them. I don't know what my husband is going to think if I praise that way or worship that way or come to the altar or manifest or get delivered or a demon comes out of me or I get healed. I don't know my boyfriend, my girlfriend, who honestly gives a rip what they think they are not not going to be standing with you on judgment day. You got to break out in your own praise, in your own worship, and say, I've been dull for too long. I'm telling you, I believe the answer to what we're going through in America is spiritually violent Christians. Oh no, devil, we ain't playing games with you. We ain't gummy bears. We ain't patty caking. This ain't no McDonald's, Burger King. Some of you can quote me right now. This ain't no tickle me Almo. Jesus wants me to sit on his lap and give me three wishes. This ain't no Jehovah genie. I did not come to rub the Bible and try to get my three wishes out of it. I came to lay my life down and say, God, I want to do what you've called me to do. I'm breaking out of the stale, complacent Christianity. I'm telling my flesh to shut its mouth because I'm going to praise like I've never praised. I'm going to worship like I've never worshiped. I'm going to lay my life down for this thing. We are without walls, church, and we are not going to be limited to this building, but we are going to take this thing. A little bit louder in the house, a little bit more. We're going to take this thing outside the four walls. So then the question we pose is, what did I do with the message from two weeks ago? What did I do with the message from three weeks ago? What am I doing with all the training and all the equipping? We live in this perpetual boot camp mentality where we need more training. And the question is, for what? I mean, listen, I know it sounds mean, but this is revival. This is revival preaching. Why do we need another message if we've done nothing with the thousand other times we've heard a message? Whether we need to go, I'm, I'm just wondering, at what point is your notebook full, so full of notes, but your life so empty of the move of God? This revelation, this revelation, this prophetic dream, this prophetic, I love all of it. I love the gifts. You know, in fact, I believe and I'm scared that we are actually ashamed in the church of the Holy Spirit. I'm actually scared that we are ashamed of the move of God. Let me just say the fact that we don't, as the church, I'm speaking corporately and globally to the church, because there will be, of course, thousands that watch the video as well, but I'm afraid that we have normalized the move of God not happening in the church for the sake of people being comfortable. And so now, it's just like, oh, you know, we don't want demons to be cast out because that's gross and weird and people vomit and people spit and people yell. And what are the new people going to think? They're going to think it's cool. They're like, what? I've been to every other church in Arizona and I ain't ever seen somebody get delivered from a demon. I mean, you're talking about, this is like stuff, this is crazy. This is like stuff that happened in the Bible. 
I mean, like, you guys believe that today? You believe, you, you don't believe that Jesus is just a trinket on your Sunday morning outfit? I mean, you actually, you really believe that Jesus still wants to heal the sick? You, my mind is blown. These are what the new people think. Wait, you guys lay hands on the sick every single week. You guys pray for the sick and the sick get healed every single week. You guys actually believe that you can do the same things that Jesus has, I know religious people are like Rah, manifesting right now. Email me, I'll delete it before I read it. You believe that you can do the same things that Jesus did. What gives you so much faith? Because Christ is the one that said it. And he's not a man, the Bible says, that he should lie. There's no way getting around it. Well, Jesus didn't mean that. How are you gonna tell Jesus what he meant? How are you gonna tell me what Jesus meant when it's explicitly clear even in the Greek? It means identical, the same. Well, he meant administratively. Really, Jesus was an administrator? Have you watched the ministry of Jesus? He would gather a crowd like this, which by the way, back then, this was like millions because of the population. And Jesus would get up and look at the crowd and test their hearts and say, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And everybody would leave and the disciples would smack their head going, Jesus, every time we gather these crowds, we do all this work and everyone wants to hear you preach and you offend everybody. And Jesus goes, yeah, by the way, are you guys leaving too? Because I'm not really interested in catering to your own intellect or your own desire, but I am about advancing my kingdom on the earth. I hate to be the one that breaks it to you, but the gospel is for you, but it's not about you. It is about Jesus Christ laying his life down so you can lay your life down. It's about Jesus driving out demons so now you can drive out demons. It's about Jesus healing the sick so now you can heal the sick. Same works you will do. So am I doing the same works? No, no, I'm not. And then we use verses like, well, brother, it's not really about the works because, you know, many will come before him and say, I prophesied, I did miracles, I cast out demons. That verse is the number one verse I've ever heard taken out of context. So, you know, it's not really about doing the works because you can still do the works and be saved. That verse is about not having relationship with God. It's about coming and doing all the things in the name of him, but never knowing him. And that's a perfect picture of the church, except we don't do works. We don't lay hands on the sick. We don't drive out demons. We have a form of what Paul said of godliness, but we deny the very power. This is what Paul said, uh, that could make us like God. And Jesus, I believe this morning, is blowing the trumpet to us uh, and saying, I want to wake you up. I want to. Now, some of you are like, this is really rattling my box. That's the act actually the point. I'm today with steel toe boot, uh, crunching every religious toe, uh, stepping on every religious foot, uh, saying, let's break out of this boring Christianity. Let's break out of apathy, that there there is more for you in God. And I'm just so convicted after 11 years that we read the book, but don't believe it. I'm studying right now through the book of Acts. I think we're on like chapter 18. If you're from the stream, you know. But we've been going through every single verse and I'm seeing the same pattern, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the supernatural, persecution. They're excited for getting thrown in prison. They're excited for being beat and they're feeding the poor and they're living this exciting and, and they're getting dreams and visions and they're led by the spirit. And all of a sudden at night, a man of Macedonia. So I'm gonna go to Macedonia and the Holy Spirit this and the Holy Spirit that. I'm thinking, man, the Holy Spirit is all throughout the book of of Acts, and then I look at the church today, and I don't see the Holy Spirit weaved throughout the church today. The 90 plus percent of the churches, the Holy Spirit is not welcomed in the church. The Holy Spirit is not invited into the church. The Holy Spirit is rejected, and in fact, we apologize for the Holy Spirit. Oh, we're so sorry that you had to see somebody get delivered, somebody get healed. We're so sorry that someone spoke on tongues, spoke in tongues on the stage. We're so sorry that that prophetic word, and we apologize. Why are we apologizing for what God says he would do in his church? Why are we apologizing? I'll tell you why, because we're carnal. That's why, because we're not spiritual. And Paul said the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, has given us supernatural gifts. These are gifts to the body of Christ. They're not toys, they are tools. This is not about a man displaying gifts. This is about the body of Christ walking in the supernatural power and gifts of the Holy Spirit so that you can establish the kingdom of God on the earth as it is in heaven. Friend, without the Holy Spirit, you can't do everything God has called you to do. And all I'm saying to you is 
this is fun. This is exciting. That holiness is not lame. That holiness is not boring. I wish I had somebody that would push back on the enemy today and say, devil, you're done messing with my kids. You're done messing with my marriage. I've been armed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I've been given the authority that Jesus gave the disciples, and I'm going to take my rightful place. Because the devil's betting on the fact that you won't listen to this and respond to this message this morning. Oh yeah, the devil's betting on, he's looking down, he's looking around going, oh yeah, you come every week, I, I guarantee that, that guy's not going to do it, I guarantee she's not going to come forward, I guarantee their life's not going to change, and the devil makes bets against you, and I dare somebody this morning to do what the devil never thought you'd do, the devil said you'd never be loud, you'd never preach, you'd never prophesy, you'd never get words of knowledge, you'd never lay hands on the sick, you'd never drive the devils, that's the voice of the devil trying to water you down and trying to silence you. But the voice of God says you are more than a conqueror, that you've been given all things pertaining to life and godliness, that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And God says that you are called and you are anointed to do the works of Jesus. So what were the works of Jesus? Three things. This is all spontaneous Holy Spirit, by the way. At like 12.45, the Holy Spirit started downloading a word onto me. And I'm like, Lord, why do you have to do this at 1 a.m.? Like, why can't you just give this to me a couple days ago when I was studying, preparing, and getting my message together? And every time I have my cute message, and it's a famous line. Everyone says, you say that every message. Because every time I get up here, the Holy Spirit directs me prophetically and says, Isaiah, I want you to speak into this. I want you to challenge them. I want you to, to call them up to another level. Here's all I'm saying this morning. I don't want to live my life Sunday to Sunday overeating and never actually doing what God has called me to do. The Bible says if we hear it but don't do it, we're building our house on sand. And this is the time, this is the hour where God's people need to stand up and need to be violent in the spirit. This is the time to be bold. We don't need to apologize. The works of Jesus were preaching the gospel. Again, I'm not trying to condemn you this morning. Do we preach the gospel? Well, wow, brother, you know, I'm just really not that good at sharing my faith, and I just don't know where to start, and I'll just invite them to church so the pastor can preach to them, but I don't really know. Friend, listen, if you're a Christian and you don't know how to share your faith, you, got, you really got to reconsider whether you're a true Christian or not. You really got to think about, man, because if I talk about your passion or your hobby or the car in the garage or the new purse you got or the new movie or the show or whatever you're binge watching right now on Netflix, I mean, you can go on and on and on and on and the job, the car, and we heard about it. It's like, dude, you got that promotion six months ago. You're still talking about it. And we're passionate, 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 passionate. And then it's like sharing our faith. We're, we're mute. We're silent. We're not excited. And that's what this is about. It's about drawing us back to the place of awe and wonder. It's about getting back to that place where we seek the Lord, where we are consumed. Friend, I'm telling you, I'm not bragging. I'm so far from where I want to be. I'm so far. I'm preaching to myself this morning. I am so lazy compared to where I want to be. But I will tell you this, that I am addicted to God. I'm obsessed with God. I am consumed by God. That every waking moment, all I can think about, all I can talk about, people are like, is there anything else you talk about? What else is there in life? But God, there's nothing that wakes me up. There's nothing that makes me passionate. When Jesus looked at them and said, are you going to leave? Peter goes, where would we go? What do you mean leave? He goes, you have the words of eternal life. Here's what he was saying. There's no one else that makes us feel alive the way you make us feel alive. Jesus, we've already done all the other stuff, and you're the only one that makes us truly feel alive. And I get emotional when I talk about because there's this awe and this wonder when you're in the presence of God, when you're seeking the Lord, when you say, God, I need you, friend, what you need this morning. And listen, again, I don't want to be rude. I'm flattered. I appreciate you driving. I don't want to belittle those of you that said, I came from Florida to see you. I really do love you. I really do appreciate you and all that stuff. But friend, everything you need is not found in me. I hate to break it to you. I am not the answer to what you're looking for. Everything you need is found in the man of Jesus Christ. Your deliverance is found in Christ. Your healing, come on, help me with this volume a little bit. Your healing is found in Christ. Your breakthrough is found in Christ. Your salvation is found in Christ. It is about seeking the Lord. It's about tearing and contending for ascending, saying, God, I want to be with you in your presence. I got to know you. 
I pray, I pray that you'd get a holy addiction to God, where you'd be a lunatic. I'm talking about where your family says, what in the world happened to you? All you, all you, we don't even want to be around you anymore. Because all of you will say, well, do I have to get rid of my friends? No, they ain't going to want to be around you once you're addicted to God. They ain't going to want to hang out with you. My friends would hang out with me. It's like, we got nothing to talk about because it's God, 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 all day, every day. Is that legalism? It's called burning. It's called all-consuming fire. Come on, do I have anybody in here that says, I want to burn. I want to be consumed. God is not a trinket. He's not an accessory, but he is all-consuming. And today I lay my life down to say, God, I need you for real in my life we're in the last days friend we're in the last days and the question we pose when I'm preaching about doing the works of Jesus and you might say it's a little bit too much it's a little bit too radical and don't take all that here's the question I want to pose to you what does Christianity look like in the last days what does Christianity look like when all of human history is getting ready to close the last chapter? When everything around us, the moral fiber of our nation. Now, of course, we see what's going on with the pandemic and what's going on with the war in Ukraine and nation rising against nation and Japan and, and all these places now. Everyone wants to fight everybody. We know these are prophetic signs. Jesus said, you won't know the day or hour, but you'll know the season. He said, you'll know what the world is going to look like. The love of many, it's going to grow cold and people are going to be lovers of pleasure and they're going to come, they're going to confuse our children. I did a video yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw this, of Disney, they had a big call with all their executives, somebody leaked the call, where Disney said that we want going forward 50% of all of our cartoon leads to be trans, or part of the LGBTQIA, and this is the Disney saying this, we want to make sure that our lead characters are transgender, and they took out now at Disney, they don't say ladies and gentlemen, they don't say boys and girls, and now everything is being changed around us, our kids are being, their identity is being questioned. There is a war waging against us, and we can no longer afford to sit back with our head in the sand and act like nothing's happening. But we are living in the last days, and there is a last day remnant. There is a last day revival that God is raising up that are going to pursue righteousness, that are going to stand for holiness, that are going to say, devil, we're on to you. And we see your plans and we're not apologizing for casting you out we're not apologizing for laying hands on the sick we're not apologizing for speaking against the devil's agenda you know traveling I'll be honest with you if you know me I'm I'm a revival guy I'm holiness guy. Some of you, because you've only followed me maybe since I started streaming is, oh, he's all about deliverance and casting out devils. And it's big because it's a big part of Jesus's ministry. I believe the church isn't talking about it. So I tell pastors, when you start talking about it, I'll stop talking about it. I do believe it's an issue. I do believe it's a message God has given me. But if you know me like today, my message is revival. It's repentance. It's holiness. And I I feel at times that when pastors invite me in or I come that now I'm home here. So I can say what I want to say. But when I come to churches, it's always this weird thing that I'm just recognizing where it's like, oh, I got to be careful talking about deliverance. I want you just to just stop all of your preconceived notions about deliverance and miracles. And I want you just to hear and just open your mind and hear what I'm about to say. I always have this thing in the back of my mind. It's real where I feel this pressure of like, I got to be careful. I don't talk too much about what Jesus did. I mean, think about this. Just follow my train of thought. I don't want to talk too much about miracles. I don't want to talk too much about casting out demons. I don't want to talk too much about challenging people to live a supernatural life. I don't want to, and there's this weird thing in the back of my head, and I felt the Lord just yesterday tell me, Isaiah, are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed of my spiritual gifts? Are you ashamed? Is the church out of place in America where we're actually embarrassed of the works of Jesus? embarrassed of people getting delivered, embarrassed of people getting healed, embarrassed of people, oh, we don't want them to hear us speak in tongues, embarrassed of people speaking in tongues, embarrassed of prophecy happening in the church, embarrassed of words of wisdom and words of knowledge and interpreting tongues, and, and we're embarrassed of all of these things, so we say, oh, we'll just do it in the back corner, in the back room, because we don't want new people, what, to see that God's real? We don't, we don't want new people to believe in the gospel, 
Jesus said, when I cast out demons, it's the finger of God. It's beautiful because this is me liberating. I'm talking about those of you that have been years and years of depression and anxiety and fear and addiction. And you went from prescription to prescription to prescription. And every doctor and every nurse said, oh, it's just a mental illness. It's just this. It's just that. And one day you stumbled into a place that actually believes the gospel. And all of a sudden, something came out of your body. And no longer do you have night terrors and panic attacks and PTSD and OCD and anger and, and bitterness and the desires and the deepest, darkest thoughts vanish in the blink of an eye. You think, you think Cupcake Church is going to deliver you like that? Friend, this is about us no longer being ashamed of the works that Jesus did. No longer. Not just the preaching, but the three main things he did, any scholar will agree, preaching, healing the sick, and casting out demons. That is the work of our Savior. And we are embarrassed of it. We're blacklisted. Oh, we can't have Isaiah come, you know. I literally got canceled. Uh, I got to be careful here because I'll get in trouble here. It's okay. Who's going to get me in trouble? I don't know. I always say that, but it's like, really, who cares? Who am I scared of? Cancels me because they're afraid of people manifesting in the service. They're afraid of people manifesting, of demons getting cast out. So we got to cancel it, and I had to wait a time before I announced that because then you, it'll be, you, I don't remember the church. You won't remember anymore. But we got to shut it down because, you know, we're afraid that God's going to move. You know, we've gone so long, and this is really what it is. We've gone so long, God not moving. We've gone so long playing church. The America has gone so long not seeing people healed, not seeing people repent. Hello, is that a cuss word still in the church? Not hearing the message of hell, not hearing the message of salvation. We've gone so long that now when we see it, we blacklist it. But here's the crazy part. We're embarrassed of the Holy Spirit. We're embarrassed of the move of God. And today I'm saying, go forward. Let us not be embarrassed any longer of the move of the Spirit. Let us not be embarrassed any longer of healing the sick at the grocery store. Like my sister said earlier, let us not be embarrassed of preaching the gospel. When I'm at the airport or at the hotel or out in public and someone comes to me and I'm, I'm talking to them about life and you know delivery driver or whoever it could be that I'm interacting with and there's that desire to share with them to tell them about God to share my testimony and then there's that 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 I call it the chicken line. It's that thing where it's like, oh, I just don't know. I don't know if I could cross it. I mean, what if they think I'm weird? And what if they, what if they laugh at me? What if they, and so I just, I hold back and I reserve. And you know, I realize that voice that's telling me to keep my mouth shut. You know, what I realize that voice that's telling me, don't share your faith. You know, they don't really care. They've been in church before. That is the voice of a demon. That is not God. That is not the Holy Spirit. The Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit, y'all. Are y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me out there? God has not given you that spirit. So who gave me it? Who gave me that spirit? Who is making me angry this morning? I, I'm pretty sure everything I've said is in the Bible. So why am I so mad? Is it Isaiah? Is it because he's so skinny and sweaty? Is that what's making me? Is it because he doesn't breathe? Is it because every word he goes, <gasps> after every single breath and takes these deep, long, and don't take all that, brother, try doing this and see if you don't breathe like that. <laughs> what is making me so angry? The devil. It's not God making you mad about the fact that you're not doing anything for him. You're mad because you're wrestling with this idea that you've bought into Western Christianity and it's nowhere in the Bible. I mean, I'm looking at Paul and he's preaching in the church and then he's getting kicked out and then he's preaching in the synagogue and then he's getting kicked out and then he's preaching in the, and I'm thinking like, am I being repetitive? Is Acts saying the same thing? Oh no, Paul is being persecuted by the religious people for preaching the true gospel. They didn't want to hear the truth. But today it's not about what do I want to hear. It's about what do I need to hear to kick me out of complacency and out of apathy and get me activated. April 25th, come on, activate, where they're going to be training and equipping to do the stuff. What? I mean, honestly, if I look at the church and go, okay, 
and just from the world's perspective, and this is why I was an atheist, okay? So you're telling me you want me to give up drugs and drinking and partying and all the stuff that Bible says sin is good for fun, but for a season, and you want me to leave all this exciting stuff I'm doing? I mean, really, I was an atheist thinking this, and, and what exactly do you want me to do? Oh, just come to church on Sunday. <laughs> so hold on, I'm partying every day. This is why we had prayer meetings every day, because we used to party every day and we didn't know what else to do. I was like, well, we're not partying, so we might as well pray. You want me to leave all of that just to come for an hour and to hear a message that none of you are living? And there's no passion and there's no excitement. And they're out there at the rave, screaming, dancing, shaking every fiber, every body part, screaming. No one's at the rave going, can you turn the mic down? No one's at the rave with their hair getting blown in the sub, saying, hey, DJ, I don't like this song. You know, we, we sang this song last week. I don't like how bright it is and the lights are too. I don't, no one's at the rave doing that. Yeah, we come to the house of God. It's to this, it's to that, it's to that, it's to this. It's called a spirit of complaining and it's not from God. I'm telling you, friend, we get saved and we become soft. I mean, I look at some of these guys tatted up from head to toe and they're soft. They go, brother, I don't know, we should cast out devils. I'm thinking, really, you're that tough and you're scared of the devil? You're gonna, you're scared of casting out demons and you're like Mr. Tough Guy hitting people over the head with a bar stool? I mean, we just have jellyfish backbones in the church today and we're like, well, we don't wanna talk about the LGBTQIA agenda because you know, they might come at us, so? What do you mean come at us? They're training our kids while we're babysitting Christians. Friend, if you don't disciple your kids, the iPad will. We need some Christians today to rise up and fight back spiritually and say our battle is not flesh and blood. Our battle is spirits. Come on, Without Walls Church. Are y'all hearing me today? Is there any men that would rise up and say, oh, devil, you done messed up. You crossed the line. You ain't coming in this house. Jezebel, get out. Delilah, get out. Ahab, get out. Come on. I'm not going to live my life ashamed of the gospel. So here's the deal. I'm done apologizing. I'm done. I'm done, I don't care what you think, I don't care what you say, don't invite me back. Come on, come on Holy Ghost, help me today. Don't invite me back. Cause as for me and my house, we're standing for truth. And we ain't playing games. We're believing all of it or none of it. I'm believing that I'm going to get activated today. I'm gonna to lay my life down and say, Lord, it's time to level up in the spirit. It's time to stop playing the games. Cause God is calling his church to preach the gospel to share your faith. I just don't know how, let me tell you, tell your story. Tell your story. Man, I was this and now I'm this. Man, God saved me, God protected me, God delivered me, God healed me. You know a good way to witness? I witness to people like this. Now y'all call me crazy. I start going straight for, oh man, I had tons of demons God delivered me from. Be like, you had what? I've seen those in movies. I'm like, oh man, I had so many critters on board. I mean, I had demons and, you know, I thought it was normal. And you start speaking to what they think is normal. Oh yeah, I had this, I had that. And God set me free and the power of God's real. Oh, what type of Christian are you? A real one. Are you spirit filled? I'm like, is there any other type? What do you mean am I spirit filled? Is there non-spirit filled Christians? What denomination are you? I'm, I'm the Bible. My denomination is I actually believe every single verse in the book. I mean, we have, we have such a soft Christianity in Arizona. People just go, but they never experience the presence of God. And guess what? I'm not talking about in the building, y'all. Are y'all clicking this morning that I'm not talking about getting delivered at an altar? I'm talking about getting delivered in your bedroom. I'm talking about when you call your Christian friend and say, oh yeah, you need to get deliverance. Come over to my house at three o'clock. I'll get a babysitter and we'll deliver you in my living room. What do you mean? Oh, I gotta wait for pastor's permission. Really? You gotta ask your pastor's permission? What are you, a baby? If you can do what God, well, are you, gonna, are you gonna be at the grocery store and someone's pouring out their heart? Yeah, man, I'm just lost, man, and I've been hurting, and you know, I've went through this, and I've been in the hospital, and you're like, hold on, give me one second here. Just give me, Pastor Ken, I got this guy here I really wanna witness. Do you mind if I witness to him? Okay, thank you so much. What are we doing in the church? You think your pastor's gonna be mad at you for witnessing at the grocery store? Friend, we have to take all the responsibility off our leaders and say, I am a Christian. I've been in church for years and God has called me no more excuses. I'm living this thing for real. This is fun. 
I mean, imagine being a real Christian and doing what Jesus did. People say, oh, brother, and I already know this video is going to get taken out of context, put on YouTube. It's all right. I enjoy watching them. They're comical to me. And they're going to edit and say, oh, well, if you do what Jesus did, why don't you walk on water? If I have to, I'll try. I mean, people tell me, do you walk on water? I mean, I've never been in a storm, but if God told me to, I would try. I have no problem. Well, have you ever raised the dead? I've tried to before. Oh, yeah, I believe I believe in raising the dead because the same spirit that raised Christ is in us and we have resurrection power residing in us that the Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature. We are partakers of the Holy Spirit. Living, friend, do you know God's name is holy? <laughs> Let me just break down this very basic revelation. Spirit is a definition, not a name. His name is Holy Ghost or what we call today Holy Spirit. What does spirit mean? It means he's a spirit. So his name is, we call him the Holy Spirit, but his name is Holy. He is a spirit, so his name is Holy Spirit. But have you thought about this? His first name is Holy, and you're telling me he doesn't require you to be holy? His name is Holy. This is what it means. There is nobody like you. You are unlike any other God. And I am awestruck in wonder of the glory and the majesty and the goodness and the mystery and the depths and the anointing and all that you have. I am in all of you. You are so much more entertaining than the office. Come on. You are way better than the new Bachelor show or whatever you guys watch. I don't even know if that's still around, whatever. But man, I'm so old. I'm like, I've been saved 11 years. I'm talking about shows from 11 years ago here. But you are unlike any other God. So that means this, I can't treat you the way I treat my work. I can't treat you the way I treat my kids or my spouse or the way I neglect my responsibilities. You are unlike, you are on the throne, you are revered and my entire life is now about bringing honor and glory to your name. Now that you've saved me, now that you've delivered me, I know the message is basic. I got 700 videos, okay? If you wanna go watch something, you can go on the channel. I'm telling you this morning, this is the word of the Lord, that our God is holy, that there is nobody like our God, that he is majestic, that he's the one that was and is and is to come. And there is a Jewish man getting ready to come back. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You are holy. So I don't have to pray for the sick. I get to pray for the sick. I don't have to preach to people. I get to preach to people. I don't have to cast out demons. I have the privilege of driving demons out of people. I don't have to come to church. Oh, you gotta be, go to church to be a Christian. What are you talking about? I don't have to, I get to. I'm privileged to be in the house of God. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather open the door in the house of God than to dwell and party with the wicked. There is power today. There is power when we come together in worship. There is power when we come together in praise. I am privileged. Wait, you mean I get to pray? You're telling me, Isaiah, that any, oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost today. You're, tell, you're telling me that tomorrow afternoon I could shut my door in my room and I could encounter the almighty creator God in my bedroom. You're telling me Jesus said God dwells in the secret place. That's God's geographical location on the earth. That's where God is. I just don't know how to find God. Have you been praying? No. Have you been reading? No. Have you been fasting? No. Then where are you looking at God for? I fast to get closer to him. The disciples didn't fast, why? Because Jesus said, why would they fast when I'm with them? But when I'm not with them, then they're gonna fast. Why would I pray? Why, why would I not pray? Why would I not fast? Why would I not? You're telling me I can open up a living book and I can get to know the creator God and God can speak to me and that word is going to sharpen me and it's going to change me and it's going to do all these things, wash me with the word of God, renew my mind. You're telling me, I, oh yeah, you have to. No, 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 I don't have to. I have the privilege. I have the, guys, we are so pathetic compared to most of the world that's being persecuted, where they're crying over the Bible. Have you seen these videos in China where they get the Bible for the first time? And they're crying and they're on the Bible and they're hugging it and kissing it and weeping and you're going like, what's the big deal? I have five of those in my house. But there is this privilege that I get something so powerful and so real, a living active book, yet all week long we don't read it. 
Do you guys see what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to draw an illustration that we have all of this ability and yet we don't go into this. When did we go in the secret place last? I mean, we go weeks, pastor, months without getting in the secret place with God. And now it doesn't have to be in a room. It could be on your way to work. I got an hour long commute, okay? I'm gonna get in the car. I could pray, I can seek him. I can know, Father, I praise you. I worship you. Thank you, Lord, for changing me, for delivering me. You are holy. There is nobody like you. And you're right there at the red light and the person's out the window down looking at you. And you're speaking in a heavenly tongue of angels. And the Holy Ghost at the red light is beginning to pray through your mortal body or you're at home as a stay-at-home mom and the kids but finally fall asleep after two hours of cocoa melon finally the wheels on the bus two hours of listening to the wheels on the bus and I have 30 minutes before they wake up and scream at me for another four hours and I'm gonna get on my knees right there while cocoa melons playing because if I turn it off, the kid's gonna wake up. And I'm gonna begin to call out to the creator, God Yahweh. And God himself is going to dwell with me, is going to dwell in me. Friend, God living with us and in us, this is the hope of glory. This is the divine privilege, and it is underrated. We underrate prayer, we under, and we do, we have all this access, but we're all worried about what we're gonna do this morning on a Sunday. Oh, I'll just wait. And this is what we do. This is why Sunday could be damaging if we're not careful. Because you wait all week long to get it here. That is why we have to get up here and struggle. Come on, guys, let's worship. Because it's abnormal. It takes you 40 minutes to get in it because you haven't been in it all week. So you're like, oh, I got to get out of the anxiety from all week. I got to get off the depression. I got to, you know, I've been doing terrible things. I got to spend 20 minutes repenting. And we have all this. And Tiffany's like, come on, guys, let's worship. And then it's like at the last song, you ever wonder why the last song's the best? Because we're all finally there. What would happen if we entered with thanksgiving and praise? We came to the house of God saying, oh no, this is, I've been experiencing this all week and I'm just excited that we could do it all together, what we've already been doing all week long. And now, and then pastor gets up, these are the marching orders. And you take that word and you say, I'm gonna apply that pastor. You preached on fasting, I'm gonna actually fast. You preached on giving, I'm gonna actually give. You preached on holiness, I'm gonna consecrate, I'm gonna cut things out. You preached on miracles, I'm gonna start, I don't know how to do it, I don't know, but you know what? I'm just gonna lay my hands, it can't be that hard anyway, and I'm gonna start praying for this. You preached on deliverance, I'm gonna try this out. I got plenty of cousins that have demons I could cast out of it. Don't act like you don't know somebody. Come on, somebody look at your husband. We're gonna practice on you, honey, when we get home. I could do it, I got this. Oh, bat, come on, let's do it in Jesus. Jesus' name, let's take the gospel serious. And the same works, the same works. Preaching the gospel, healing the sick. And here's what I love about God, he makes all of it so easy. It is so easy to share your faith. Hey man, God has changed me. I'm not, listen, listen, this is how I share it. I'm not talking about some religious God that you grew up. I'm talking about God is alive and real and the Holy Spirit wants to heal and you and change you and the anxiety, the fear, the depression, all the stuff you're afraid of getting sick and dying. God can deliver you, the Bible says, from the fear of death and he doesn't want you to be that way and I know and you gotta, I'm telling you right now, can I pray for you? Uh, I mean, I guess, sure, you, you know, you didn't really give me a choice. Oh, I'm gonna pray and you lay hands, you father, I thank you for this person that I don't even know their name and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would encounter them the way that you encountered me. I pray, Lord, that you would change them the way that you changed me and believing that the power of God would reach them. I'm talking about doing the works. Healing the sick. How do you heal, how do you heal the sick? You lay hands on them. I mean, look at Jesus. He tells the disciples, go lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do I pray? Do I command? Go lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In my name, you got it, you got it. However you do it, I'm, I got you. All you're gonna do is, and it's like, okay, we all have a hand. If you don't have a hand, lay your nub on the sick. I mean, it don't matter if you have no hand, if you have an arm, just whatever you have, make some type of point of contact and then just let the Holy Ghost lead you. I mean, I know we have all these teachings and all this stuff and it's all great, but you don't need any of it. The sufficiency of scripture means that everything I need is in the Bible, that everything God, you don't need a special secret teaching to buy. God says, I've given you the power and all you gotta do, worship team, you can come up. All you gotta do is lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. Why? Because I've given you my Holy Spirit. Remember his name's holy. And he's not like any other spirit. There is power in the Holy Spirit. I gave you the Holy Spirit. So it's super easy. Go out and do it. Go cast out demons. He didn't even tell them how. In fact, they were so shocked that what he said worked, they came back going, you're not gonna believe this. 
Even the demons obey us. Like, what? It works. And he's like, duh. He's like, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Like, defeated. No power. And I, y'all didn't believe me when I said you had the power and authority? Didn't give them a long teaching. Didn't tell them that you got to do 14 steps. And you got to go through a 21-step process. And you got to make sure this. He goes, no, just go do it. Well, how? You'll figure it out. God is interesting because God leaves things vague so that we seek him. I remember my first time casting out a demon. I did it all wrong. I mean, I was on top of the lady choking her. I had no clue what I was doing. And the Holy Ghost is like, get off of her. That's not how you do it. And I sat there. I didn't know the Bible. I just got saved like four, three, four days prior. I knew that she had a demon and the Bible says we can cast out devils. That was about it. I didn't have no theology on it. I didn't know all the verses. I didn't know the seven deliverances Jesus did. I didn't know Acts, you know, eight where they cast out. I just knew, okay, well, I guess, hey, look, she's got a demon. Let's get it out of her. And so I literally thought it was like, physically gonna come out of her. So I was like, open your mouth. I mean, literally I was over her screaming and everyone was like, uh, I guess, because no one else had done it before. So we're like, I don't know. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is like, get off of her, okay? See, we don't trust the Holy Spirit to speak to us anymore. The Holy Spirit is a better trainer than Isaiah Saldivar. Can I get an amen? Get off of her. Don't open her mouth like that, because we literally were like, open your mouth, it's in there, I see it. I mean, I'm telling you, if you knew the full story, it's embarrassing, okay? I'm giving you the parts that aren't as cringy as I could tell you. And God off, okay, that's not how you do it. And we sat there and cast a demon out. Why? Because Jesus said, I've given you power and I've given you authority. And religious people will scoff at this, they will mock this, they will call this foolishness because they're perishing. But to us being saved, it's the very power of God. Here's what I'm saying. It's time for us to do the works Jesus did by the power of the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm not even in my intro yet, guys. I'm telling you for real. God is saying today, this is the time to stop apologizing for his work. Stop it. And I know, I know as pastors, like, what are they going to think? Who cares? I post videos, and I'm like, oh, man, I have all these famous pastors that follow me. Oh, I already know they're going to judge me. Oh, they're going to think I'm weird because I'm talking about the mark of the beast. Oh, they're going to think I'm weird because I'm posting another deliverance video. And God's like, so? Why do you care what they think if you don't want what they have? They're not casting out devils. They're not healing the sick. They're not preaching to people on the street. So why are you worried, Isaiah, about what they think about you? Get delivered from the opinions of men. Come on, everyone stand on their feet this morning. So you know what? Normalizing the gospel. No more apologizing. No more being ashamed. It is time that we do what Jesus did and we make it normal. And once it becomes normal, it's not this weird thing. It's just normal now. It's just, this is what we do, we're Christians. And again, my message is not about what we do in the church. Are y'all hearing me? I'm talking about in our everyday life. Your cousin called you, hey, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, I cast a demon out of somebody. What? You did what? Oh yeah, I cast a demon out of somebody. What do you mean? Well, I'm a Christian. What do you mean, what do you mean? I'm a Christian. That's what, kind of what we do. That's kind of what the label means. It means I'm like Christ. What'd you do this weekend? Oh, I saw somebody that was deaf get their hearing back. What? How are you gonna just act like it's no big deal? Because it is no big deal. Because the same spirit that raised Christ has quickened my mortal body and, his body and is living on the inside of me. So I could do these things or, or I could just keep showing up to church. Just come and hear a message and 30 minute worship and boring, boring, boring. Never living out what God's called me to do. Friend, religion is boring. Without the presence of God, do you know why this morning is exciting? Do you know why I love coming to church? Why I gave ele given 11 years of my life to going to hundreds of churches and preaching to the local church? is because it's exciting because I got the Holy Ghost. And when I'm able to come and worship in the Spirit and pray in the Spirit and get lost in God, God told Isaiah, these people, I've all day long, I'm waiting for them to look for me and nobody's looking for me. Nobody is seeking me. God is looking for people that would seek Him in their everyday life that would break out of the comforts of American Christianity and say, God, I'm going after you. I'm really, really going after you. I want to know you. And it doesn't mean you have to be weird. You don't got to be weird. You can be spiritual and be normal as well and impact people around you for all of eternity. Change those that are broken. Those are from, there are so many people hurting and broken right now. What are we doing hiding in a building? What are we doing waiting for next week to share our faith? Waiting, I mean, some of us, the only time we've ever shared our faith is we shared it to someone in the church. Go, yeah, brother. Yeah, go tell somebody that needs it. We're not here to play flashlight tag. 
It's like, oh, look at my light, look at my light. We're shining the light on each other. We're salting each other up. Too much salt actually doesn't taste good. It actually burns your tongue. And my wife, I like eat her food and I'm like, what, how do you eat this? It tastes like acid, it has so much salt on it. Too much salt is not a good thing. We need to go where there's no salt and sprinkle the salt, sprinkle life and go do the work. Go do the work. This is what your pastor wants and I'm on staff here. This is what I want, okay? I live in California, by the way. Some of you are like, I'm gonna say that and the next week you're gonna be like, where's Isaiah? He said he was on staff. I live in California, but I'm on, I'm on off, on staff, off staff, okay? I'm a, you know, vacation, what do they call it? Vacational or, by, I don't know how to say it, whatever. All right, I'm per diem or whatever they say. I don't know, per diem, what do you guys, you nurses call it, all right? I'm that here. I come here, I light that fire, I blow that trumpet, I awaken the people, I'm, I'm that John the Baptist voice God has made me, but it's not about me. So here's what we're not gonna do this morning. We're not gonna do an Isaiah style of our prayer line. People ask me, why don't you let people line up and why don't you this and why don't you, you know, do prayer lines and be the one? Because it's not about a one man. It's not about a show. It's not about me. It is about the people of God being empowered to do the work that Jesus did. So you don't need to wait for me. I love you. I appreciate you. And please, please hear my heart when I say this. We're gonna have a prayer team come up here. And if you're all part of the prayer team, I guess now you can come up, that'd be cool. So any ushers, staff, prayer team, prayer warriors, whoever you are, you can just come up here and you can just line up towards the um, people. Here's the thing, you may not have somebody pray for you, but guess what? You can get a hold of God today, regardless of whether someone prays for you or not. Some of you think, and please, Again, I'm trying to be so respectful when I say this. Some of you think I need Isaiah to pray for me for this to happen. That's wrong theology. That's old covenant. I need the priest to go to God for me. You have direct access. And I'm telling you right now, you don't need me to pray for you, for you to get what you need. The truth is I was an atheist. I got full of the Holy Spirit. I got all these things happening to me and not one person laid hands on me. I was in the altar and the Holy Spirit did the work. So I believe today the Holy Spirit can do the work. Now we are gonna have prayer warriors that will pray for you. And it's gonna be you saying, this is what I need prayer for, okay? And they're gonna pray for whatever your prayer needs. So if you need that, they're gonna be here. But please, don't come grab my shirt. I don't wanna have to be rude. Don't come grab my thing saying, I need you, brother, and pull me. I'm telling you, everywhere I go, people do this, and it breaks my heart that you think I'm what you need when you really need Jesus. You really need a touch from Jesus. Please, please, don't elevate me. I don't wanna stand before God and God say, you let people worship you. Friend, that's not God, okay? That's not God. Again, I love you, but I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an idol. I'm not nothing special, except I've said yes to God. And you can follow me as I follow Christ, praise the Lord. But make sure that Christ is the focus today because I don't wanna grieve the Holy Spirit by making it about me. So if you're in this room, maybe you don't need prayer. Maybe you just wanna respond in obedience to say yes to this message. Yes to doing the works that Jesus did. You can still come forward and just, you know, I don't need prayer, thank you. I just wanna worship and be at the altar. There's something prophetic, symbolic, and powerful of you getting out of your aisle, out of your chair, and coming to the altar prophetically and saying, God, I'm letting the altar alter me. There's something really powerful that happens when you come out of your chair. So maybe you need prayer, maybe you don't. If you do, make sure you grab somebody. I'll go through and pray, but don't grab me, don't line up. And then I want to make sure that we're keep staying respectful. So right now, if that's you, come out of your chair right now. If that's you, come out of your chair. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you just want it symbolically. Come on, come on, come on. Healing, deliverance, whatever miracle you need. Maybe you need to come stand for a family. Maybe you need to come up to the prayer team and say, hey, can we pray for my daughter? Can you come in agreement for my unsaved kids? Can you come, maybe bring your family up and say, let's pray for family revival today. Let's pray for a move of God in our family today. Come on, maybe you just need somebody. You may just say, hey, the person next to me, hey, you want to agree with me? You want to agree with me? for my family to be saved, whatever you need, this is our chance to come to God and say, God, do the work. I got saved at an altar. I believe in altars. I got full of the Holy Spirit at an altar just like this. Come on out of your chair. Come on out of your chair. Come on out of your chair. We're gonna start worship here in a second. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you today, come on out of your chair. Just make your way. There's tons of room. Just, we're family. We're family, get nice and tight. Don't worry about social distancing. Praise the Lord, we'll be fine. Come nice and tight, there's plenty of room. Find a spot, maybe you need to come on the altar here, kneel on a stair. Maybe you need to come to the side, just find a place. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this house. Father, we apologize. Lord, today we repent for being ashamed of you. 
We repent for being embarrassed of you. Father, we wanna be unashamed of the gospel. Father, we wanna be unashamed of your work. And Father, today we repent and say, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. God, we desire spiritual gifts. We desire to do the works that you did. Father, you said that we do the works you did and even greater. God, we desire the greater works. We desire the greater works. Father, we want to do what you did. Maybe you're watching online right now, wherever you're at in your room. Say, God, I need you today. Father, forgive us for not going to our word. Forgive us for not praying. Forgive us for not seeing the divine privilege of fasting. But I thank you, Lord, that today you're changing it from I have to to I get to. Come on, God is changing it today from I have to come to church to I get to come to church. You don't have to worship, you get to worship. Do the work, God. Satan, you are bound. You have no power. I bind every demonic spirit, every demonic power. You must go in Jesus' name. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. You must go now to the pit in Jesus' name. You have no liberty here. We bind you, every unclean spirit, you are bound. Father, we ask that you would deliver those today that need deliverance. Cancer, we command you to go. Sickness, disease, inflammation. Right now, heart disease, lung disease, blood disease. Father, we are asking for your divine healing power that ears would be open today. Minds would be open to your word, God. Arthritis, Father, we pray you'd bring healing right now. Right now, Father, bring healing in the bones and the ligaments and the tendons and the nerves. Disease, you have no power. Get out of these bodies now. We thank you, Lord, that your word says that we can lay hands on the sick. Your word says that we can speak healing. Today, Father, we ask you in Jesus' name that you'd heal those that are sick right now. Father, heal those that are sick right now, Lord. Father, we're moved by compassion, God. We're broken. We need your healing power today, God. We need your power today, God. Be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, just ask him if you need healing. Ask him right now. Come on, it's his kingdom. It's his power, it's his glory. Come on, the kingdom of God has arrived. It's in this house. We have some prayer team, you just come up, say, hey, we're all family here, guys. Father, I need healing in my heart. I need healing in my mind. My eyes need to be healed. My nose, God, my, my scent, I've lost my sense of smell, bring healing. Come on, ask him right now. Not Isaiah, I can't heal you. Jesus is the healer. He's the Messiah. He's the great physician. Healing power of God. Healing power of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Migraines, nightmares. Come on, fear of death is being broken today. It's beautiful what God is doing in this room. Maybe you just need someone to agree with you in prayer. Maybe you just need to say, hey, will you agree with me for my marriage? Marriages are being restored. Some of you that have lost your love for your husband or wife, God is restoring that love right now. God is rebuilding that trust. God is bringing a supernatural healing right now. Some of you feel heat in your body and your hands. The Holy Spirit is pouring out on you right now. God's gonna use you to heal. God's gonna use you to deliver. God's gonna use you to prophesy. God's gonna use you to prophesy. God's gonna use you in words of knowledge and in interpreting tongues. If you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right now, just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, oh God. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. I see the river of God flowing through this house. I see the river of God and the Spirit flowing through this house right now. Rivers of living water. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are on the verge of giving up. God says it's time to push through. I'm refreshing you. I'm renewing you. God's giving you a second wind today. The disciples got full of the Holy Spirit when Jesus was here and then also in the upper room. Fill us again, Lord. Fill us again. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom, God. Fill us. Fill us, God. Yes, God.